What's up, everybody? Today, I'm going to show you a demonstration of how simple it is to introduce CyberArk's identity security platform solution, Conjure Cloud, into your Kubernetes cluster. Now, I know what you're thinking. There's no way, Joe, you're going to get a SaaS platform into my Kubernetes cluster. And you're right, I'm not. But we have some really cool ways that we can extend the security and compliance that comes with CyberArk's Conjure Cloud into your Kubernetes cluster so that you can start to extend that down into your applications there. We're going to be using the external secrets operator today to help us manage the lifecycle of secrets within Kubernetes clusters. Now, this works with any flavor of Kubernetes you may have, whether it is a cloud-managed version or an enterprise version or just open source vanilla Kubernetes, all of them will work with this. So first, what I'd like to do is introduce you to the concept of authenticators. Authenticators are the way that Conjure Cloud is able to quickly identify and authenticate workloads that may only exist for milliseconds. The way it's able to do that is by pre-configuring an authenticator service, a web service, that workloads can authenticate through utilizing something the platform provides them in order for us to be able to evaluate who they are. Let's talk about it. We're going to be focusing on my JSON Web Token Authenticator for ESO.MeshApps today. As with every authenticator that we make, this authenticator has a service ID of authenjwt forward slash ESO JWT MeshApps. We're going to need to remember this value for later on when we configure the integration in Kubernetes. But first, we need to configure the authenticator to understand what it's up against and what it's evaluating. Since it's a JSON web token, that JSON web token will arrive to Conjure Cloud with a signature. We need to first validate that signature. We're first going to need to trust the issuer of the token, so we do accept that value as part of the configuration of the authenticator service. We also need to be able to validate the signature of the JSON web token. If your cluster is publicly available and accessible from Conjure Cloud, then this value can be a JWKS URI. And we'll reach out just in time to that URI in order to get the latest JSON web key set to validate your JSON web token. If you're running in a disconnected environment with no public access, or in an air-gapped environment, such as my demo environment, we also accept public keys from the JSON web key set to be loaded so that offline validation can be done. So in the case of this demonstration, instead of reaching back out to a JSON web key set URI to validate based off the key set out on the public internet, we will be evaluating internally against public keys that I've preloaded. So that is how the authenticator service is going to handle and trust something that the workload identity has. It will be handing to us a JSON web token that is trusted by this authenticator service due to the configuration we just we went through here. Now we need to figure out who the workload is and identify it. That's what the other two configuration values do. Inside of Conjure Cloud, you have either a workload or host identity that can contain many breadcrumbs leading up to the very root of that workload identity's name. And so that's what the identity path and the token app property configuration values are trying to do. The prefix 
of a workload identity is going to be defined in the identity path. This is essentially the breadcrumbs that lead you to the actual workload identity's name that we're going to be lifting and retrieving from the JSON web token that we received payload. The prefix is going to be statically set here. In my case, it's data infamous DevOps, CD, Kubernetes. And then from there, we know to append on the value of the claim sub from the JSON web tokens payload. So the authenticator will look that up, place it on, place it onto the end of this. And then from there, go looking for a workload identity that matches that idea just created. Lo and behold, in our case, it will find one. Down here, we have system service account, mesh apps, product catalog service. And if we take a look at the full ID, it is data infamous DevOps CD Kubernetes or our identity path configured value from our authenticator service. And then the name system service account mesh apps product catalog service, which aligns with what we expect the sub claim in the payload of the JSON web token we receive to be. System service account will always be the prefix of a Kubernetes service account on a JSON web token that's being evaluated. The namespace will be next, mine is mesh apps. And then the name of the service account is the final piece of the puzzle. Mine is for my product catalog service. Once all of that is done, we have now validated the signature of the JSON web token. We've identified a workload identity that aligns with what we received on the JSON web token payload. And now we need to do further evaluation. We need to check something that it is. We've already evaluated something it has, that JSON web token signature was handed to us. That's something it had, the workload identity had. Now we're going to process something that it is. In our case, I've set up a couple more values from the claim on the JSON web token, one being kubernetes.io namespace. That value should be mesh apps. And another Kubernetes IO service account name, which should be my service account names product catalog service. You're more than welcome to add on as many of these as you want in your own environment to make you feel comfortable. For the sake of this demonstration, we're sticking with these two. But all of these must be evaluated and pass in order for us to then be able to be authorized to retrieve the secrets that we need. That is how often. JWT works in Conjure Cloud when dealing with Kubernetes workloads. So with all of this configured now, we have our workload identity. Our workload identity has privileges to secrets that we may need. We're actually going to be pulling in these last three here, the address, username, and password. You can see that there is RBAC in place that allows it to authenticate and read to our ESO.meshapps web service. So without this, even if I present all the proper information, I am not I am not granted authenticate rights to authenticate over that web service, I will still be denied. There are many layers of security that need to be applied here to ensure that we are trusting it, it is valid, it is authorized. And then we'll also be able to see that it's a member of an apps group that's tied to that authenticator we've been discussing. By being a member of the group, this group is what is granted read and authenticate rights, and then it's inheriting it here from that group, as you can see. So with all of this set, we can flip over to Kubernetes to take a look at how it's done there. So here I am in Kubernetes now, I'm visualizing it through an application called Lens. 
Uh, and I have quite a few deployments out here, but we're really focusing on two namespaces, my external secrets namespace and my mesh apps namespace. My external secrets namespace was created when I Helm installed the external secrets operator. You can find it at external-secrets.io. Helm installing this gets it set up, gets it rolling, gets the namespace ready, and also adds a couple custom resource definitions that we can utilize. After we Helm install, we will need to create a couple. There's five custom resource definitions that are created. A cluster secret store and a cluster external secret. Namespaced secret store, namespaced external secret. And a newer custom resource definition called push secret. For today's demonstration, we're going to be focusing on secret store and external secret, the namespaced versions. For secret store, in the external secrets operator, this is how you configure the external secrets operator to connect to an external secrets manager. The external secrets operator's sole purpose in life is to manage the life cycle of secrets in Kubernetes secrets based on an external secret store that it's connected to. So what that means is, in my secret store definition, I'm only going to be configuring the external secrets operator on how it's going to authenticate and connect, in this case, to Conjure Cloud. So when we edit this and take a look at the definition, we'll see in our spec, we have a Conjure provider set up with JWT authentication. We're referencing a service account, providing our audience we want on the token that is going to be sent to us and generated. We're giving the service account name that we want uh, to authenticate with, and then providing our service ID. Remember this from earlier on in the video, ESO.meshapps. That is the service ID of the authenticator service we want this service account to authenticate through, and it'll be going through our public Conjure Cloud service for this demonstration. Once this is set up, it will double check and make sure it can access everything that it's valid, it is ready, it'll flip to true when it has tested the connection and it's ready to start uh, serving external secrets. So the connection is done. Now, the other definition was an external secret. This particular external secret definition is going to have the same process of becoming ready once it's connected. Uh, but what it looks like is a little bit different. This is where we're actually defining the Kubernetes secret. So we want the name of the Kubernetes secret to be mesh app MS SQL secret. And then inside of there, the data we want is our different secret variable IDs from Conjure Cloud. So I've got address, username, password, and the refresh interval is set to two minutes. So every two minutes, the external secrets operator will check in with Contra Cloud to look for changes to these secrets uh, so that it can be updated in the cluster Kubernetes secrets. Or maybe these secrets disappeared and they need to be removed now. Who knows? But it will manage the life cycle of those secrets going forward. Once both of those are set, we can go to Kubernetes secrets and you can then see our mesh app MS SQL secret is there and available. It's being provided by external secrets IO. And within we have our address, our password and our username. If we unveil the address, it is the SQL server in AWS that I need to access. So this is good to go. It's ready for me to utilize. Any changes to that will be reflected here because the external secrets operator is refreshing this data, if necessary, every two minutes. Now, what this means is that I can start to take a lot of the static secrets that I have stored in Kubernetes secrets, onboarding them into CyberArk's identity security platform, managing them 
and rotating them there using either Privilege Cloud or a self-hosted PAM solution, we can introduce compliance into the Kubernetes cluster that requires no manual overhead from your developers or your admins of the cluster. All human and non-human secrets are stored and managed within the CyberArk Identity Security Platform. From there, Conjure is able to utilize that as a source of truth in order to then identify, authenticate, and authorize highly agile workload identities to retrieve those secrets that are meant to be dealt with in platforms like Kubernetes and OpenShift, Azure DevOps, Ansible, right? CI tools down here. Anything that requires automation, CI, CD, ephemeral identities.